Hi, I'm Black Bright and um, welcome. Um, thank you for those who have subscribed and for those who've shared and for those who've sent me emails, giving me ideas and just basically saying that what my videos um, talk about is helpful and that's all I need to know. That Having that little bit of acknowledgement is really good. It means I'm on the right track. Okay, so somebody sent me an email yesterday and wanted me to talk about children being excluded from school. So um, it's one of those areas because I haven't got any young children I don't really know much about, but I do know that it was very difficult to be excluded from school in my day. And I think a lot of what's happened is because of in the 15th of March 1989 they stopped corporal punishment. Now I know some parents took it to the extreme and um, really you know caused damage to their children. So I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about you know allowing children to have boundaries and now that they don't have boundaries and you're expected to relate to them and talk to them and talk through their issues something isn't working. It's not working because a lot of parents do not have the wherewithal to engage with their children. Children these days they're so advanced and when you have parents who may not be as educated or as intelligent or might not have that know-how for children to learn off of and for, for them to see their parents as role models, a lot of times that is what happens. You know, the children kind of lose respect for their parents. They, By losing respect for their parents, they lose respect for adults and it seems to be downhill from there. It's fine telling parents to um, talk through issues with their children, but supposing the parents don't have those communication skills and a lot of parents don't. So, and when you're dealing with children these days, the millennials, I mean, they're so far advanced. And if they ask you a question and you can't answer it and you say, oh, go to Google or check it on YouTube, it's like, oh, you're an adult and you don't know this. Children have great expectations for their parents and great expectations for adults. And when adults let them down, they go off the rails and their behaviour becomes irrational. And I think that behaviour, this is just my opinion, has extended into the schools, coupled with the fact that they cannot be disciplined anymore. I mean, in, in England, they have the, under Section 58 of the Children Act 2004, it is lawful to smack your child, your child in a re reasonable proportion and you know because the situation warrants it but in Scotland and Wales it's banned completely you can't smack your child at all I mean I can understand it from it from one perspective because it does come like we're bullying their children we're adults and you know we're using our heavy hand on them so I do understand it from that standpoint but there has to be a better way to get our children on board so they still respect and they still um, listen to adults, which is not happening now in a lot of cases. You'll find that those children who are doing well, who are not being expelled, they come from homes where their parents are educated, usually. I'm not saying all the time, but a lot of times their parents steer them towards education or they're educated themselves. And so they are able to have that, that kind of liaison. Now, where am I going with this? I'm going with this because when um, these children who could have issues at home, we don't know what happens in the home when children turn up in school. There could be a bereavement, there could be a new sibling, there could be abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, there could be neglect, it could be isolation. The parents could have had a divorce or, you know, the mother or the father's got a new partner and the, the child is feels left out. There could be no acknowledgement of the child. The child has been, you know, relegated to the room and, you know, given something to play with or given, you know, some other stimulus. And so they don't feel acknowledged. So what happens is they go into the school and they look for um, acknowledgement in the school and whatever, whichever way that takes, 
that's what they do and a lot of times those people who they are drawn to are the, are the troublemakers the ones who are making most noise and the ones who are vulnerable just like themselves only these young people don't see that they see boys who are attend to attention the girls might be around them they, they might be getting attention from the teachers even though that attention is negative and as a result because the teachers have targets they have to teach in a certain way and because when they try they, I think the KS2 is, that is what they use to measure GSC results and if they feel that there's children in the class that's not going to help them meet their targets they get rid of them I know it's supposed to be really extreme cases to expel children. It's done on, um, I think, three levels. There's seven days, there's 45 days in a year, and then you have permanent exclusion. Even when you have permanent exclusion, it does mean that the local authority, along with the parents, must educate the child within six days. And I was thinking to myself, with excluded children, what is to stop parents setting up their own school? I mean, they do have these pupil referral units, but from what I see, they're like little prisons. You've got all of these wayward children all vying for attention, and it's destructive because unless a child decides to change and then he might get picked on or she might get picked on, everything remains the same because you're always trying to belong. You're all, they're always trying to um, be one of whoever is getting the most attention because that is what they want. And we're in these schools, you know, I was watching one of those YouTubes where the BBC did a documentary and it does seem as though um, some of them wanted a turnaround, but they'd already built up a negative reputation of play fighting, of not listening, of turning up late, that they felt almost pressured to keep up that behaviour, even though they wanted to change and reintegrate into the schools. So I don't think those peer referral units are any good. I mean, some people, some children say that they turn their lives around, but you know, for the most part, I think, you know, it's because you've got all the bad kids in there, they feel, a lot of them feel as though they have to keep up appearances and they don't want to lose reputation. So I was thinking to myself, this would probably be a good opportunity for instead of parents feeling disillusioned because their children have been expelled, to have some to build up some kind of Saturday school for them, you know, somewhere where it is relevant to who they are. I think it's dispor disproportionately black, um, Romas, um, gypsies and um, special education needs. They're the ones who are mostly um, excluded and they are the most, well I shouldn't say they're all the most vulnerable, but they are the ones that probably, um, I don't even know what the word is, but they probably need more support because of the pressures and history and everything like that. So if they're not getting that support in that environment, they are going to seek it elsewhere. And they say most children who have been excluded end up in prison. So that's not a good direction for our children. I didn't know, though, that excluded children were not allowed in public places during school hours. I didn't know that. Or fair parents get fined £60. Because, I mean, I know I see kids on the, on the streets all the time when they're supposed to be school. So I don't know how that works. Um, the teachers are, are meant to um, inform the parents when their child has been excluded and they're supposed to go through this process. I don't know how effective that is, but I do know there is something that parents can do, and that is for them to get together and start a school of their own. I think children are too intelligent and too clued up today, and I think when they go to these schools and they hear, you know, lessons that have been taught, you know, in my generation, that might have been relevant to me, but are no longer relevant to the new generation because things change and they are so far advanced and they know most of this stuff. So when you're telling them stuff, it's like, oh God, it's bloody boring. Or, oh, you know, I can't relate to this. Oh, I know this already. And they lose interest and then they get distracted. And then from their distracted, you know what they say, idle hands. So um, I think a lot of it's got to do with that. Um, 
What is the answer? The answer is um, paying more attention to your children if they haven't already been excluded. If they have been excluded, it's about looking for alternatives and not just leaving it to the, the local council to deal with and these referral units, but setting up something within your area that will accommodate excluded schools, but with people who care about them and the people who can look at these children and see that they're damaged and they're hurting and they're fighting for their lives. A lot of times when they're going to school, it's like a survival system. The peer referral units are even worse. They're surviving, they're trying to survive. And they need somebody to recognize that. They need somebody to know that something's not quite right at home and to make exceptions to the rules and talk rather than balk. Because a lot of the teachers, because they have to meet um, these targets, they don't have time to talk to children. They don't have time to find out what's wrong that's going home. And all they see is they're, you know, they're going to be reprimanded if they don't meet targets. And all they see is these children are an obstacle to them reaching their targets. And all they can think of is, oh, let's get rid of them. Let's just get them out of the school. Informal, um, informal um, exclusion is unlawful. They're not allowed to say, okay, go off and um, just call off and come back another day. It all must be registered, but a lot of informal exclusions are not registered. Um, I'm going to give you a few statistics. There was 37,000. 790 fixed term exclusions and 980 permanent exclusions in 2016 to 2017. There were 6,685 permanent exclusions in 2015 to 2016 according to the BBC reality check team and informal exclusions are often not accounted for, for so there are masses of exclusions that are not accounted for. Um, I did, I just wanted to make sure I've covered this, the kind of things that our children get excluded for, which I mean hair should not be one of them. I hear that if they're going with cane rows, they're either told to take it out or some kind of rubbish like that. I mean, what has the hair got to do with you learning your lesson? The teacher is focusing on the wrong things. If the behaviour is okay, forget about the bloody hair. It's absolutely ridiculous to expel somebody because of their hair. Now, that is something I don't agree with at all. But um, disruptive behaviour and not listening. Um, okay, they send them to detention and then they skip detention and so they expel them. Um, I, I, th I don't know if they have counsellors in the school, but I think a lot of these children need counselling. They need somebody to talk to, somebody they can trust and not somebody who's just going to nod their head and say, oh, you know, yeah, so what does it feel like? Because, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm a counsellor and I understand how those kind of things are meant to work. But, you know, repeating and, and so you can understand what they're saying. They call it mirroring and all that kind of crap. Well, I shouldn't call it crap. No, I take that back. But I think it depends on who you're dealing with. You know, and young adults, they, they you know, if you're going to relate to them that way, they're going to rebel. They're not going to feel listened to. You have to be able to engage. You have to understand where they're coming from. And a lot of people don't. They, they think that by trying to draw it out of them, that is the answer. But sometimes these young people just need to know that somebody actually understands and then from somebody understands, uh, you know, you know, change takes place. Anyway, um, so the kind of things, other things that pe children get excluded for is disruptive behaviour, not listening to the teacher, swearing, verbal abuse, hairstyles, I've said that one, property damage, now that's not good, assaulting a teacher, absolutely a no-no, no tolerance for that, carrying a weapon, no tolerance for that, assaulting peers, no tolerance for that, not turning up for class, what is the reason for that? Are they looking after young siblings? Do the parents know? Is it in collusion with the parents? Do the parents don't, are they, do they have kind of parents who don't value education and who just feel as though the child must be there to look after them and the family and go out to work? So you have some parents who are like that. Um, skipping detention, slap on the wrist and behaviour outside school. I didn't know that. 
Apparently, if um, young ch if young children or young adults misbehave outside school, they can be expelled for that. I mean, I think if they've got a school uniform on, I don't know if they've got a school uniform on or not. It didn't specify that, but it does say behavior outside school can lead to expulsion. Um, yeah, I think I've talked about targets, I've talked about types of exclusion. Did I? Did I? Anyway, types of exclusion, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. They have seven days. And then they have 45 days within one year and then they have permanent exclusion. And then after permanent exclusion, the parent and um, the local authority have to arrange for that child to be, have um, in, well, not informal, but go to the, one of these pupil referral units to be educated within six days. So the education does continue. Oh, it should continue. And um, this is where I think um, parents could get together and start up some kind of Saturday school. When you, If you listen to somebody like Akala, that is what turned him around. He couldn't get on. He was a rebel in school. Look at him now. And a lot of that was because he went to a Saturday school. It was because what he was being taught was relevant to him and who he was as an individual. So that could be the answer just you know just have to th sometimes you have to think outside the box you can't always rely on people telling you what to do or how to do it um yeah a lot of times children have to decide to change um what is their motivation what do they love to do and if you can work with that i mean there has to be something that they enjoy or something that they love unless they're totally demotivated and that means that there is a mental health issue that means they're bordering on depression if they've got no motivation so you really have to watch children we look at them and everybody thinks not everybody but a lot of people think that they're bad kids when they're noisy and disruptive but sometimes they're crying for help and nobody's listening um equality act says no discrimination that's the Equality Act 2010, but black children, Romans, gypsies and special needs are disproportionately set to, pu to pupil referral units. Um, and it's unlawful to informally exclude children. I did mention that, but the section is 29 brackets 3 of the Education Act 2002, which was amended in 2012. Um, I'm not quite sure if this is what that gentleman wanted when he asked me to do something on um, exclusion of children, but I hope it's helpful. Bye-bye.